but essentially the point being if you don't make it easy for average people to be able to run a bitcoin node or to be able to run a node then the system will tend to centralize and when the system tends to centralize then you have to be thinking about the capture and political risks associated because if the system becomes overly centralized are we, what are you really creating are you just create are you just recreating a new system but with yourselves at the top i think most of us here in bitcoin see this like we're trying to create something different the current money system is just a mess i think bitcoin obviously is the logical next step and uh, rather mir miraculous invention um, if you ask me so kudos who did that if we could just protect it and let it sail let it do its thing and then eventually the monetary system as we know it evolving until we just don't need it anymore I know that's hard for anyone of this ge generation to fathom, but eventually we'll get there. A whole new thing. Completely new thing. Was Bitcoin going to go from zero to a world reserve currency? It wasn't going to go in a linear fashion. A nice, clean line upwards. Bitcoin acts like humans do. Bitcoin is part of humanity. We're raw emotional beings, and we FOMO in, and we in Excel. Yeah, so volatility isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think that this word volatility has become this sort of like, ooh, evil word of like, oh man, volatility. It's volatile. That's scary. Well, you know what's volatile? Like Apple and Google when they were first starting out. They were some of the best performing equities in human history. And like, yeah, they're going to be volatile. They're not going to be super smooth. And when people think about volatility, I think volatility is both a, you know, volatility works both ways. And it's this idea that the individual's incentives must be aligned with the group's goals. And reality is optimizing for the whole and not for you as an individual. Money is just a number in a database. That's what it is. Um, and it's primarily an information mechanism for labor allocation. That sounds like a nice idea, you know. Uh, but it's hard for people to, to get that, to remove money from its pedestal and see it in its proper context because we're just... It's just so entrenched in our psyches uh, about being the fundamental underlying mechanism of, of our world. But if we can change that, I think that would be a major shift in the right direction. The Fed is a, the result of a bizarre experiment of genetic engineering and government. It's part private enterprise, it's part bank, it's part government agency. And I, I actually, I, I try to walk through this history really briefly in the book, but, you know, up until 1913, uh, we really experimented a lot with money. The United States was very resistant to creating a central bank. Well, people, they don't want to wake up and challenge their assumptions over money in, in the government, right? Like, they want to believe everything's run and, and under control. It's pretty scary to be like, yeah, no, they have no idea what they're doing, and they're kind of running amok. I mean, that takes, it's sort of akin to like if you challenged your assumptions over religion or something. And so for someone's individual personal beliefs, right, like challenging that is a very big, big thing for someone. Same with Bitcoin. When pe people worry about Bitcoin's energy consumption, you could easily say, well, are you worried about the dollar's consumption of energy? It requires all the physical buildings. It requires the military. It has giant ships that are powered by nuclear reactors. You have all sorts of other issues as well. Of like, you have huge into you know, huge banks and central it's banks. Nuclear. That it's nuclear. Nuclear. How come no one can pronounce that word correctly? So I really just think it comes down to having enough people who have that vision and have that belief that, yeah, we really can make the world a better place. And part of that starts with fixing the money, as Marty Ben says, right? Fix the money, fix the world. Well, it's important to understand that none of this was possible before the U.S. stopped backing dollars with gold. That's why it's so important to understand the significance of that change. That change fundamentally changed the nature of our economic system. It would not have been possible for the Fed to create $4.6 trillion during the last two years to fight COVID 
if it had to back those dollars with gold. The Fed doesn't have $4.6 trillion of gold. Oh. On the Fed's, our economic system evolved at that point. Dollars no longer were backed by gold. When the nature of our money has changed, the nature of our economic system changed. Capitalism evolved into creditism. Creditism has transformed the world. But I think financial education, and it just, it amazes me that there is not financial education requirement in every school, every high school in America. So I think to graduate with a high school degree, it'd be nice to have, you know, even a half hour credit of financial education, you know, how to balance a checkbook, how to use a credit card, what a 401k is. Very, very basic. I just was today teaching at university and I was teaching the very most basic thing to juniors and there were business majors at a major university. And there's 150 of them and the questions I'm getting, really a 13 year old should know. We need to have that financial education. The number one thing that people over 50 worry about is money. The number two thing married couples fight about is money. And the number one, you know, number one thing is probably obvious. It's not, it has nothing to do with money. It's way more interesting, right? I mean, it's not like this is theory. At some point, it has to be controlled. But if you look at the United States and you look at the debt as much as it is, the difference between the United States and Zimbabwe and Turkey and Greece, you know, countries people like to compare this debt to, the difference is we have assets behind it, whether it's land or energy and gold. There are a lot of assets that the United States has. The United States is a naturally very rich country. Even if the United States winds up not being the superpower, that doesn't mean investments go away. The United Kingdom was the leading country of the world for centuries. What happened is ceded that to the United States after World War II and their stock markets, I don't know, up 20 times, 10 times since then. This idea that if you lose first place, if China passes us that somehow the United States has collapsed, not really how it normally works out. You still have Japan, you still have the United Kingdom, you still have countries that were leaders. They, their markets can still do well, even if they're not in first place. But either way, those are really the roads to riches. So if we're stuck just doing something in the name of earning because it's a necessity, that doesn't leave the space for thinking. That doesn't leave the space for listening to ourselves and discovering our purpose or creating a compelling vision. There's so many people out there that their vision is, I'm going to work, fund a retirement, and then when I retire, I finally get to live the good life. But what happens if you don't make it because you're, you don't take care of your health? And so I think one of the biggest issues when it comes to money in life is we bought, we bought into a faulty notion called sacrifice, right? We think that sacrifice is required in order to be successful and hence why the world's so unhealthy. And before they know it, they're addicted to this kind of limited lifestyle that was all in the name of better life. And they may have the stuff in the consumer condition, but they don't have the fulfillment. They don't have the joy. They don't have the happiness. They don't have the energy. They don't have the health and the longevity because ultimately they become enslaved to cash, to finance, to, to loans, to all those kind of things. And this is unfortunately the state of the and condition of most of the world today.